Uh, this evening, I have, uh, again, oddly enough, we just have one verse of scripture again this evening. Uh, but I, I feel that that's where God would have us to be, so that's where we're going to be. Um, to start with, um, I'm going to need just, uh, not everyone will have to partic participate, but I will need just a little bit of participation here to get us started. We will eventually get into the book of Proverbs, is where we're going to be. Um, But uh, where okay, let's start this way first. If you guys will think back or forward for some of you younger folks like Ryan, um, if some of us think back and some of us forward to the time whenever we got married. Some of us may not be able to remember that long. Um, some of us may try to forget. Like Mindy. But uh, when you got married, there was... Uh, um, I remember there was something that was asked of, of me. Uh, what few times I've got to do marriage counseling. It's one question that I always ask is where... And I ask each, each one individually... Separate. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, you know, if both couples have nowhere close to the same plans, you can pretty well figure out that you may be doing marriage counseling again uh, coming up. But uh, you, you have uh, goals. You have uh, things that you uh, would like to see down the road, you know, like in your career or whatever job you may have. Where do you see yourself in a few years? You know, uh, uh, when you're uh, uh, 70, do you see yourself working? Do you see yourself retired? Um, all these things are um, a, a vision, if you will, that we have. Now, from the church standpoint, we are in November of 2016. Church, where do you see the church being in November of 2017? One year from now, where do you see the church being? Do you see the church on an incline? Do you see the church on a decline? Do you see the uh, continued growth of kids in the church? Do you see uh, uh, a continued activity of kids in the church? Or uh, I mean, seriously, where, where do you see the church in a year? This is that little bit of participation I was talking about. We still see it in Monroe. Okay, good. Uh, but if you if you look at it where you see the church, all right. Now, now stay with me here. I'll, I'll make sense of this here in a few minutes. I promise. Maybe if you're listening. Um, you ever built something? Now, David brought me something that is very important when it comes to building. This morning, he brought me a set of blueprints. Now, if you didn't have a vision, if you will, or if you didn't have a a, a, a thought process of what you wanted and you started building, you would eventually just start nailing two before us together and when you run out of them, you just stand back and look at it and say, huh, what have we got? we got a bunch of two before us nailed together and that, that's about it. But you look at these blueprints, what that blueprint is, is that is a vision that somebody had, a vision that someone could build. Okay, now let me get more specific in asking the church. Jason, you're a Sunday school teacher that is here that I don't care to pick on. Nobody else would really like to talk. So, Jason, where do you see your your class, your your youth class, in a year? So you're on that, uh, if we're doing the growth chart, you're on the straight line point right now. You're not really declining, but you're not really on the incline. But you look at the other youth that is in here, and you can see that, uh, you know, you and Renee may ought to think about, oh, we're going to have our hands full in a couple years, maybe we ought to retire. Uh, but it, it's uh, looking to the future. You can see that, uh, you know, Ryan's on the doorstep of adulthood. Lord, help us. Right, Fry? But, uh, Ryan, you're a good one to pick on. You're 18. Where do you see yourself in five years? School in five years? Lord, what are you going for? Or are you just planning on a career student? That way, Mama David still pay for stuff. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. He ain't no dummy, see? He's got a vision, and that boy's got a plan. Now, none of us knows what that plan is, but he's got one. 
you look at uh, uh, um, Ms. Verna, where do you see your class in a year? What would you like to see in your class in a year? Becky, you want to throw anything in? Huh? So you, each one of our teachers has a goal for their classroom. They have a vision. Now that is important. Melvin? What do you... Right. Okay. So everybody has something that they want to see in there, and that is awesome. Because if nobody had any plans for their class, then in a year they're just going to nail a bunch of two before us together and stand back and say. Huh. You see where I'm getting at? You look at, uh, well, I promise we'll get into the message later, and this kind of is the message to, to an extent. But you look at, uh, let's look at it this way. God sent his son, his only begotten son. What if it just stopped there? That he just sent his son. There was really no, they was just flying by the seat of their pants, if you will. God sent his son, and after some time, he was going to bring him home. But what, what would happen in between? There was a plan that was laid there, correct? There was that, uh, uh, what uh, First Corinthians calls that foundation that was laid. Let, okay, now let's look at Paul and his missionary journeys, the, the, the things in which he went forth and did. What if he just went forth? Would it have done him any good just to go visit, you know, uh, uh, Galatia? I mean, he just passed by, didn't he? But he had a plan. He had a vision. He had a, 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 a thought-out purpose of what um, was going on, if you will. Now, in, in the book of Proverbs, and in chapter 29... There's one verse of Scripture we're going to look at, and we may turn to Acts to kind of fill in the blanks here a little bit. But in the 18th verse of chapter 29 in the book of Proverbs says this, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you again here this evening, Lord, we're just so thankful, God, for this opportunity, Lord, and the freedom, Lord, in which you've granted us, Lord, to allow us to gather together in your house, Father, and in your name and worship, Lord, without having a, 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 a system of checks and balances, Lord, of what we would have to go through. Father, we're thankful, Lord, that uh, we're free to come and to go as we please. Father, I'm very thankful for those uh, men and women who have fought and died, Lord, that has given us that right, Lord, for those that have uh, sacrificed time out of, their, out of their lives and from their families' lives, Lord, to go forth and defend our freedoms. Father, I'm thankful for that, Lord. I'm thankful to be born in a, in a country where there is freedom, Lord, where I, I, I can go and do. Father, we're just thankful, Lord, for your son, Lord, and the, uh, the, the fact that you saw fit to send him to save a sinner such as I. Father, I'm just so thankful for that, that, that because of what he accomplished on the cross of Calvary, Lord, that I have your ear when I need it. Father, Lord, that I can send my thoughts, my concerns, my prayers, Lord, and my praises up into the portals of heaven, Lord, and know that you hear them. 
Father, Lord, I'm just so thankful for that. Lord, I'm thankful for our congregation. Lord, those that uh, take you serious enough, Lord, to return again, Father, just to, uh, to be uh, fed one more spoonful, Lord, of your word, Lord, of what it is that you would have in store for us this evening. Father, I'm thankful, Lord, for the eagerness, Lord, that we see here at Oakdale. Father, I'm thankful for the kids, Lord, and the parents and the grandparents that see that their kids get here. Lord, we're just thankful for all these things. Father, we just want to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Here this evening, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you could stand with me, Lord, and just to help me to, uh, to speak exactly what it is that you'd have me to preach this evening. Lord, we ask all these things in your Son, Christ Jesus' name, and amen. And I, you see, we was talking a little bit about vision and a plan. And uh, uh, what Solomon is saying here, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you look at all of our Sunday school teachers, you look at the officers, the, uh, the, the, the deacons, the, the pastor of a church and all these things. If, uh, if you just randomly selected any pastor that you wanted to pick and you walked up and said, what is your vision for that church? And they said, well, I don't have one. Fire them. If you have friends uh, uh, that go to a church such as that and they don't have a, a, a plan or a vision for the church, get rid of them. Everyone should have a plan. Everyone should have a vision. You know, uh, God uh, spoke very plainly to me uh, not too long ago and gave me a vision for Oakdale, gave me an idea, gave me a plan. And he didn't, uh, he, he kind of gave me a timetable, but uh, uh, it's, it's not a short term thing. It's one of those things that takes a while. As I spoke to my deacons about it, it's about an 18 month plan. It's uh, roughly a year and a half before uh, the vision that God really laid upon my heart that you would start seeing the benefits thereof. And it's just uh, uh, the different things, but there must be be a vision there must be a plan no just as uh, uh, God sent his son down to earth to die for you and I there was a vision and there was a plan God had purpose behind what he was doing everything every step that he uh, that Jesus took while he walked there was purpose behind it it was all part of this vision amen otherwise Jesus would have just walked aimlessly saying well what what my father wants me to do today well I'll just go over here and hang out but there was purpose the people he encountered were put there on purpose. The, uh, his friend Lazarus dying, was died, he died on purpose. So that God the Father could receive the glory. So that people could see and believe that Jesus truly was his son. There was purpose there, but where there is no vision, the people perish. Now you look at a, a different church, you look at Sunday school classes, okay? Let me pick up my Sunday school teachers for a moment. If they just got up each, uh, each week and they walked in and uh, just said, well, I'm just going to teach what's in the book and there's no real uh, uh, planning, there's no real purpose to what's going on there, those people are going to perish. It means there's going to be a dying classroom because all you're going to do is just come in and sit. But there must be a plan, there must be a vision, just as our, uh, we spoke to our teachers, they have ideas, they have goals, they have things that they want to see, and as long as there's things that they want to see, they're going to work towards them. Amen? Well, now church, I ask you a question, where do you see the church in a year? Everybody in here probably has a different answer. But are you working towards that goal? Is your goal common? Is your goal uh, 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 more self-centered or is your goal more God-centered? Is what you want to see, is it the same things in which God would want to see or is it just something that you would like to see? You see where I'm going? We talked this morning about pleasing men versus pleasing God. Is it pleasing to God? Book of Daniel. Daniel had some visions, amen? John had some visions. Well, let's say they just had some visions. What next? They had a vision, they picked up one of these. And they began to write. They began to act upon what the vision was. As Jesus said, to, to the angel spoke to John and said, write down the things in which you see in this vision. Write, I want you to write this down, put them in a book, what, whatever you see, write it. Turn with me here for just a few moments and let's look. And, and, and I'm not going to read all this. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I guess I'll have to, do it. I guess for it more to make sense. But turn to the uh, Acts chapter 9, very familiar stuff. Uh, but I'm going to begin in verse 3. And it says, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. 
And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? He knew who he was. And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling... And astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. I want to pause right there. At that moment, Paul had literally no vision. Do you, do you grasp what I'm saying? Paul stood up and he had no vision. He, he couldn't see. He was led into the city. You, are you with me? Everybody paying attention here? Paul did not have a vision, but he had instruction. Did, do you catch that? Uh, the man which stirred to them stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, and Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And Jesus' instruction was, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But he had no vision. Now I want you to picture a man wandering blind. We could go into, uh, the, I believe it is the book of John, and uh, maybe chapter 8, and read of a blind man that was told, told to go wash in a pool that I think was like three miles away. Now you imagine a blind man wandering through a city trying to get to a certain spot. Someone who had no vision, but had instruction. You may not have a vision for your classroom, you may not have a vision for the church, but do you have instruction? With instruction comes that vision. With obedience, the vision would be made clear. But it says, and, and he was three days without sight, neither did, uh, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarshish. For behold, he prayeth. Now Ananias had vision and he had instruction. But at the moment he wasn't willing. But verse 12 says, It has seen a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, so Lord, said, Lord, I have heard many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And Ananias had vision, he had instruction, and he had fear. But not only did Christ overcome death, hell, and the grave, Christ overcame fear that you and I have. Sure enough, he did. Read your Bible, it is in there. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. There is no such thing as fear from a Christian. There should be expectations. We all fear persecution, amen? But it should be an expectation because the Bible says it. Amen. It's in there. Read it. Keep your finger right there, but let's go back. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now let's look from the, the, a different end of the spectrum. Paul was the apostle to whom? Us. Well, let's say Paul had no vision. Where does that leave you and I? Does that not fulfill that verse right there in Proverbs? It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Paul brought the message to the Gentiles. Amen. And faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Paul's one who brought that into the Gentiles. But where there was no vision, the people would have perished. Without Paul being uh, having an idea, without Paul being uh, uh, told what to do. And as you get over in here and it says, uh, 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 But the Lord saith unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. But you keep on going through, through there and you keep learning and studying about Paul and you'll learn that he had a vision. 
to each of the letters to, the, to his churches that he wrote, there was a vision that was in there. From what we are talking about this morning, his vision was to see the church grow more spiritually because people would come in and begin to teach different things. And it was uh, uh, teaching a, a false doctrine, if you will. They was teaching things other than Christ. They was doing all these things. But Paul had a vision of this great church. He had a vision. Now, let me ask you this. All important question, church. Do you specifically, you individually, have a vision? You must have a vision. You must have a thought process. You must have a desire. You must have, you know, just like our, 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 our play director. Without a vision, she couldn't have a play. She must see what she wants. In directing the play, she must see what it is that she wants. If she can't see that, there's just going to be a bunch of people up here rambling off words. But there must be a vision that is there. The people who write the plays, they had a vision. VBS directors, they too must have a vision. Granted, there is curriculum that kind of tells you what to teach, but there's a vision of how to pull it all together, make it as, as fun as can be for every person that is there to make it as, uh, as involved as so every person enjoys coming back. There must be a vision. If there was not people in a church that had a vision, all churches would be dying churches. And it's sad to say, but a lot of churches are dying even with vision. You look at churches, they, uh, you know what the one thing that everybody here is equally afraid of as the next? Yeah, I said afraid, and we're some uh, uh, people in here that we might think of as brave, but every person is afraid of change. Amen? We can all agree on that. Every, nobody likes change. But if it's a vision according to God, why fear it? Just as what Jesus was saying against uh, Paul here, you can kick against me all you want to, but it's going to hurt. You can't defeat what I want to happen. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You will not get in my way, Saul. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use you, Saul. And I'm going to make it like this for you. If you choose not to obey me, you're going to spend the rest of your life blind. You had a vision of destroying the church. I took that sight away from you. Now I'm giving you my sight. You will see what I want you to see. And if you ain't going to see that, you'll see nothing. Do you see what Jesus was doing here? He took Saul's vision. Do you know why he was going to Damascus? Read the few verses before. He was going his way to destroy what people, the Christians, he could destroy in any way in which he could do it. But Jesus took that vision from him. He said, that vision does not line up with what I want. Now here, it's like this, bud. You're going to see my way or you're not going to see it all. But he had vision. And he had instruction. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But now let's take that same thought, that same thing that we're all afraid of is changed. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, if I want to present a change to Oakdale Baptist Church, and that change takes away doctrine, that change takes away Christ, happy are we not going to be? No one's going to be happy with those things. Because Jesus is being taken out. That is a vision that has been given forth by the devil. Amen? Amen. That's not something that comes from God. But where there is no vision, the people perish. You guys are probably all expecting some drastic change to come here in a minute. But, but, but there's not. So quit worrying because there's, there's no change coming. That I know of yet. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You look at the law being commandments. Now you flip back over here to Saul. What did he do? He was led. He was led where he needed to go. He kept the law that was given to him. And what did Ananias do? He too kept that law. He done exactly what was instructed. 
Now, can we say that both live happily ever after? To an extent, maybe. But I know Paul spent some time in jail. Paul had some rough ways to go. He was in a couple of uh, uh, shipwreck or two. You know, Paul didn't really, the things wasn't all great at thereafter. But he had a vision. And he had a God sent vision. All these things being said, teachers, I don't know specifically who I'm talking to here tonight, but if you're discouraged in what's going on in your classroom, all I'm telling you is it ain't going to be high, you know, just smooth sailing from the time that you say, all right, God, I'll submit and I'll do to it. I'm going to tell you that it's going to be big waves come. I'm going to tell you that you're going to ruffle feathers. I'm going to tell you that not everybody's going to be on board, but I'm going to tell you as long as your vision coincides with what God told you, you just hang in there. Because I can tell you, God spoke to me. And I was thinking, you know, that would be awesome, Lord. Yeah, let's, I'm on board. Let's do that. And then God says, well, I mean, it's an 18-month plan. And you're like, oh. Oh, well, i got to wait 18 months. Okay. And it's one of those times that you start waiting. Lord, I'm waiting to see you work. Saul sat three days with no sight. He didn't eat or drink. But he was waiting to see what God had. Most importantly, what happened to Saul. It rhymes with it, kind of. It, he saw what God had in store. He, his eyes were open. He began to see. So what I'm telling you, teachers, uh, uh, deacons, uh, Sunday school superintendent, whoever you're going to be next week, fair enough, whoever that's going to be, I'm telling you, if you have a vision and it is a God sent vision, stick to it. Did Jesus meet adversaries along the way? People who did not uh, uh, agree with what he was teaching? Did, did they not just uh, uh, flat out not agree with what he was doing? Hey, that's against what we do. We've never done it that way before. Let's kill him. I don't think anybody's going to crucify you here at Oakdale. Not physically, they might by, you know, verbally. But what I'm saying is, Jesus kept to the plan. He stuck to the vision. Paul had problems along the way. I am tied up around something. I can't move. Paul stuck to what he was told. He had problems along the way. The churches that he went forth and started and, and he had this vision and it was about as soon as he left, they began having problems and he would have to go back. And he'd have to reteach and he'd have to redo this. But he stuck to his plan. He stuck to his vision. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, maybe you're in a role here at Oakdale where it don't really matter if you have a vision or not. You know, you're a, a, what Becky had on the bulletin, a bench warmer. Did you guys just not flat out enjoy those this, this morning? Those was hilarious. I loved them. By far, best bulletin you've ever done. We may not think we have a role. Then you pray for someone else to have a vision. Parents, grandparents, do you know who teaches your kids? You pray that they have a vision. You pray that they see what it is God wants them to do. You pray for your deacons, your, your teachers, your pastor. You pray for each person. You say, Lord, please send them a vision. Now let me ask you this. On this November the 6th of 2016, look, this is a bigger crowd than normal for a Sunday night. That's fair enough to say, right? But would you not like to see more here, you know, next week, next month, next year? Amen, we all would. You know, there was a time whenever we was planning our, our on how to, to, to build on to Oakdale. And you want me to give you my honest answer of what happened? Our vision became as whose vision was the best. What would be the best way to build on? We took our eyes off of God. We didn't look and say, God's going to provide. I don't care what, what any of you guys want to do. God's going to provide the way. But we took our eyes off of God when we began looking at man. Christ is your vision. Did you know that the Aminette girls sing a song and they've sung it every single time that they have came here? It's called Be Thou My Vision. If you want to have a vision, let it be Christ.